Alright guys, what is going on? We're back with another episode of the podcast. And we've made it to 10 shows. Um, I'm shocked. That is the actual longest. Like, I've done a couple more. They've lasted a couple episodes. They've never done anything good. Uh, View-wise, view this one, obviously doing alright. So, I'm on number t- show number 10. And we've got a lot to discuss. Being episode 10, I promised you guys that we would uh, predict the AL American League for the 2017 season. Um, And that's exactly what we're going to do. But first, we are going to start out with all the other news in the crazy world of sports. So, the Nuggets trade Nurjic to the Portland Trailblazers for Mason Pumbley. Here's why this was a good deal. Nuggets got back a pretty good player. I mean, let's be honest. Mason Pumbley's pretty good. Um, they trade away Nurjic, who is a good player, but he's not getting any time behind Joker. He's just not. I mean, so we needed to trade him before he got mad and, you know, Situation was not good between the Nuggets and Nurtrick. So, and Pumley fits better with Joker. So, I, I, I honestly, this is a good deal. And Portland Trailblazers are getting back a player who, if, giving, if given minutes, is going to be a good player. That's just how it, it, he really is. So, and I think there are some picks involved. I don't have that written down. But I do know there were some picks involved. So, now on to our next move. The Orlando Magic trade Serge Ibaka to the uh, Toronto Raptors for Terrence Ross. And some picks. Um, this was a good deal for the Magic. The Magic trade Victor Oladipo for Serge Ibaka. And they were saying, oh, they want to get young. That's not getting younger. So Serge Ibaka is pretty young, but Victor Oladipo is younger and had more upside. So, now they flip Ibaka at the trade deadline for Terrence Ross. And their intentions are to get younger. So, I'm confused by this whole thing. Um, I already kept Victor Oladipo in the first place. And I don't know if their goal was to get Terrence Ross. Don't get me wrong, Terrence Ross is good. But he's no Victor Oladipo. I mean, that's just how I feel about this. So... Um, and I know the Raptors, they like this deal because they get a good defensive presence. Because they lose Bismack Biombo to the Magic, actually. So, good even And they, I mean, he only does have one year left. This is the last year of his contract. I'm thinking their intentions are to go ahead and re-sign him as quick as possible when he hits free agency. Before he goes anywhere else. Because they lost Bismack Biombo after he had a breakout season. You would think they would want to keep Serge Ibaka so they don't have to go out and look for another defensive presence. That just makes sense. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty much the news. I don't think there was anything in NFL-wise besides Darrell Revis getting in some serious trouble and turned himself in to the police. So, yeah, I didn't read all of that, but all I know is I do was some trouble. So, yeah, uh, crazy shit. So now let's go ahead and predict the AL. Alright. We're going to start out with the AL East. Because it is my favorite division. And it has my favorite team. So obviously I want to start there. This was tough. This was really tough. The AL East and the West are the two hardest divisions to pick. To predict for. It was It was insanely hard and it gave me a headache. So... Let's go. Number one for the 2017 season in the AL East will be the Boston Red Sox. There's no way they're not. If they're not number one, they're they're choking. They trade for Chris Sale. They get Mitch Moreland. I mean, Chris Sale added to David Price. David Price is good in the regular season. It, it, it should matter how good he gets. In the playoffs, but Boston already had a good team. So they trade for a hell of a pitcher. They get Mitchell Moreland, who probably, I don't know, 
plays a good first base, but he's not really replacing anybody. Um, they get help in the bullpen too when they trade uh, Shaw for a bullpen. I honestly forgot who it was from the Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee Brewers. So, yeah, but number one is the Boston Red Sox. For sure, there's no way it's not. Number two is my, I say, would be my Toronto Blue Jays. Here's the deal. We did lose Edwin Carnacion. But what people are sleeping on is the rest of the team. Because we still have Josh Donaldson. Who, when healthy, could hit close to 40 home runs. We've got Kendris Morales, who injured injury prone last year. But the season before that helped the Royals get to the World Series. He hit close to 25 home runs, or maybe even more, in a pitcher's friendly ballpark. Moves and he moves to a ballpark if healthy, could hit a lot of home runs. So, yeah, I do like that deal. Troy Tulowitzki, I mean, come on now, one of, mm, still one of the best shortstops in baseball. So, um, we've got Russell Martin, still pretty good. Devin Travis, I mean, the list goes on and on. And plus, we kept. Jose Batista. So when healthy, he can hit a lot of bombs, and we all know it. But people, for some reason, sleep. I understand losing Eddie is going to be a big hit, but come on now, our our pitching staff is all the same. That rotation with Aaron Sanchez, Jay Happ, Marco Estrada, they all had pretty damn good seasons. And you throw in Marcus Stroman, who you never know who you, what you're really going to get out of the dude. He could come out there and. Win the 10 to 15 games if you need him to. So, honestly, this is still a good team. And I'm still not letting go of our playoff run. I'm not. Um, but number three in the division will be the Boston Orioles. And they were second last year. Um, the reason I say that the number three is they lose. They're number one in Chris Tillman. They really have nothing else in that rotation. It is terrible looking. And I'm, I'm being honest here. Nothing good. Uh, you cannot sell me on anybody in that fucking rotation. Now, if they just come in and put in the rotation for, I mean, the bullpen for all nine innings, maybe they might go somewhere, but they can't do that. Um, they're stuck with the rotation they have, and they do have a good offense, but they, they ain't got another rotation, so we they, they're going to stay at number three for me. It's just how it is. Um, so, number four in the division will be the New York Yankees. They got a little bit better, but still, I don't know. I don't like that team at all. They got a mix of young guys and old guys. You never know how that's going to go. Maybe they can come out and surprise people and make it to the playoffs. But to me, I have them sitting fourth. And now our fifth spot in the AL East is going to be the Tampa Bay Rays. We all know they sucked last year. They're going to suck again this year. Simple as that. Move on. Now we go to the AL Central. Or this one, honestly, is the same. Yeah, I, I, it's the same. Everything about it will be the same as last year. Number one, we have Cleveland. I mean, come on, they're the AL champs. Plus, they added Edwin Encarnacion. Yeah, pretty dominant. Gotta stay at first. Number two in the division will be the Tigers. They've got the same exact team. And George Zimmerman, healthy. So, they, they're they going to stay in second place. Um, the Royals will stay at number three. They lost some people and gained some people. So... That rotation is still not that great. Uh, they stay third. I think they'll be over 500. But they'll stay in the third spot. So. Number fourth in that division will be the Chicago White Sox. Here's the deal. They are rebuilding. But they are rebuilding in a hurry. And making their future look good. I'd say in two years. They'll be back in the playoffs. With Yon Mankata. All the pitching they got back was insane. And they still do have pieces to trade off. So you never know. In a couple of weeks. Or at the trade deadline. We could see them trade off everybody else. And look even scarier for the future. Kind of like a Houston Astros type, type situation. Honestly. How the Astros did it. Makes them look insanely good. Now we move on to the West. This was tough. A little bit tougher than the East. So number one spot. I had a lot of thinking to do. There are three teams that could be neck and neck the whole season. But number one, I got to give it to the Astros. They had a good season last year. They make it to the playoffs. And they go out and they had Josh Reddick. Carlos Beltran. 
and, and Brian McCann to help that offense that didn't need much help and still fucking and then the devil oh, that is scary looking that lineup is scary I mean for real people are gonna be watching out for them now I think they still do need another rotation piece but I think Dallas Keuchel is amazing so uh, I think they'll be alright now we go on to number two spot now this one was even tougher and I gave it to the Rangers. Now the Rangers do look good, but they lost Prince Fielder and they lost Ian Desmond. Obviously, Prince Fielder had an injury season, injury prone season, lots of seasons. But dude, on the field, his presence, his presence in the clubhouse was there. Um, and you lose Ian Desmond, who had twenty something home runs. So you take twenty something home runs and replace it with Mike Napoli, who hit around twenty something home runs as well. But you don't know how good he's going to be after coming off of a career year. Who knows if he's going to be able to put up the numbers he put up in his career year. And Rudin at Odor is going to be good. I'm not taking nothing away from the little scrappy uh, guy, but don't like him being a Toronto Blue Jays fan. So now we go with three. And I had to give it to Seattle. They've got, they they did, what was it, 12 trades this offseason? But I don't think they got good enough. Good enough. They I like the trade when they got Gene Segura. But I, I don't know. That division is so tough that I think they'll be sitting third. And I think that the wild card will be between the Rangers and Seattle. Like kind of was in the East. East last year where they got Toronto and Baltimore. But I think the West this year might get two. Or again, we might go back to the AL East and get Toronto. And then we might go to the West and get the Rangers or Seattle. So um, the number four, the final spot in the AL West is going to be Oakland. They ain't get much better. They're probably going to trade somebody at trade deadline. They'll probably trade the people they signed. That's how it'll go. So, not looking too great for the Oakland A's right now. And that was everything I had to run down. We only got to 12 minutes. That is a letdown. We had, had a lot of stuff written down. Thought we were going to last a long time. Now we'll get into just some uh, random ass talk for the last whatever for this podcast so why not why not um spring training started not the actual games but they have reported and they've been seeing video of people doing bullpen work um and stuff like that i could have predicted the you know on this episode we're gonna leave that for the next episode just because i don't have anything written down on it and i'm not prepared so the NL will be next episode, and I do want to note what are your guys' thoughts on my predictions. Do you have it looked looking a different a different situation, different way? I know in the NL, I mean the AL East and the AL West is hard to predict to predict those divisions, but I think it's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is tough. Thought we would go longer in the episode 10. I just want to thank you guys again. I mean, that is 10, ep- 10 weeks we've done this. Great support. So, um, I guess we'll throw in some wrestling at the end. I don't know, I'm a wrestling fan. Um, so, we had a lot of wrestling fans on this channel. So, if you watch this podcast, you know. George the Animal Steel had passed away. Pretty sad news. Wasn't really alive to watch most of his matches, so I didn't know much about him. But yeah, the network you can obviously go back and watch. So I mean, I I have, and I knew uh, the name and the look before, anyway. So um, I think Nicole Bass, I think that was her name. Who the the chick from ECW, buff as fuck. She passed away too. Man, two people back to back. It's not looking good. It was pretty sad there for a second, but. Hey, you never know. I mean, I don't know what to say there. Um, there's news and rumors that Kelly Kelly was backstage during Monday Night Raw. I don't think she'll sign, but she was there. I guess that's what you could say about her. So, um, WrestleMania might be looking back on the upside because Seth Ron is might be looking good for WrestleMania. The might is what gets me. You don't if he's good for WrestleMania, say he's good for WrestleMania. Don't say he might be good for he might be able to make it because that's gonna get everybody's hopes up and everybody wants him there to face Triple H. Cause 
ah, the, the, the card is not looking good besides Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. So, I don't know. Um, that's going to do it here. We added a couple more minutes. Still not long enough for me, but we're going to have to end it anyway. Um, so, with that being said, thank you for support for 10 weeks. Like, subscribe, and comment, and tell me your thoughts on anything I said in this podcast. I am out. Thank you so much for watching.